Amen, amen. One person is ready. <laughs> amen. 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 So that's, uh, oh, you don't have it. Okay, anyways. Today we'll talk about uh, the Syrophoenician woman. Syrophoenician woman. According to the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. We, all, we always say the Canaanite woman as well. Amen. But I prefer this word. <laughs> Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Are you here this morning? Amen. I'm now going to um, waste my time. Let me go read quickly and then we'll develop uh, our preaching today. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. After living there, Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Withdrew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a feedback here. Amen. And the Canaanite woman uh, from that district came out and began to cry out urgently, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, son of the Messiah the Messiah. My daughter is cruelly possessed with a, a demon. Hallelujah. But he did not say a word in answer to her. Amen? Amen. And his disciples came and asked him repeatedly, send away. Send her away because she keeps shouting after us. She is bugging us. Amen. He answered, I was commissioned by God and sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to kneel before him again, saying, Lord, help me. Amen. And he replied, it is not good, it is not appropriate, it is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the pet dogs. Amen. She said, yes, Lord, but even the pet dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their young master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, your faith, your personal trust and confidence in my power is great. It will be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that moment. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good. That is our preaching today, as I always like to present everything historically, and then from there we will develop. Hallelujah. It says here, uh, just keep, keep, the, keep the verses on, uh, on top. It says here in verse uh, 21 that Jesus withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon, Jesus was coming from Galilee with his disciples, and he withdrew. That means he was tired. He needs to rest a little bit, because whatever place he went, it was crowded. Uh, even if he wanted to pray, it was difficult. He had to withdraw. For those who know the history, these places we are describing here are outside of what I could call Israel. Amen? This is the further north. Actually, they are located right now in Lebanon. At that time, it was called Syria. Amen? Follow me. I won't go too much into history. Amen? So this lady was coming from there. She is called Syrophoenician because she was coming from Phoenicia. Phoenicia was a country when the Roman Empire was very strong and dominated that place. The Roman annexed Phoenicia to Syria. So Syria was responsible for Phoenicia. So the people who were coming from that place were called Syro, which means Syria, Syro-Phoenicia. So a person from Phoenicia. It's like a Calgarian, right? We are all Calgarians, am I right? Yeah. But we're coming from somewhere. 
we have a background, we have a culture, right? And that's where the Canaanite kicks in. Yes, she was Syrophoenician, living in, under the domination of Syria and Romans. When I say domination, I think about culture, I think about uh, demons and all the gods and everything they had. But she was from, she was a Canaanite. Amen? Amen. That is very important because the Canaanites were descendant from Canaan. Are you following me? And Canaan was the son of Ham. And Ham was the third son of Noah. Everyone knows Noah. Everyone knows Noah. Am I right? Noah had three sons. Okay. Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Okay? And Ham had a son, and that son's name is Canaan. And the, all the Canaanites and the, all the troublemakers are coming from Canaan. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 9, verse 21, so you understand why it's important uh, to revisit the history surrounding this woman. Amen? Genesis chapter 9, verse 21, uh, says... Hallelujah. I can start from even 18. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark, you remember the ark, Noah's ark? Okay. The sons of Noah who came from the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. Or oh, Japheth, whatever it is. Ham will become the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and from these men, the whole earth was populated. You understand? Now Noah began to farm and cultivate the ground, and he planted a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk. I think at this time he did not know if I drink this, I will become drunk. I don't know what led him to drink and get drunk. I have no clue, and actually I don't care. Uh, he was drunk, that's it. While he was drunk, he uncovered him and exposed himself. I heard, because I, I re really never drink alcohol, so I don't know. I heard that when people are drunk, they become hot, they want to take the clothes off. I have no idea. <laughs> that, that's what I learned. Right? And that's the reason Noah was taking his clothes off. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so Ham, the father of Ken, saw by accident the na nakedness of his father. And to his father's Shem, told his two brothers outside. Amen? So Shem and Japheth took a robe and put it on, on, on both their shoulders and walked backwards and covered the necklaces of their father. Their faces were turned away so that they did not see their father's nakedness. Okay, the reason I'm going back in the history is just to understand why these Canaanites are crazy it's because they are cursed. You understand? They are cursed because of Ham, the son of Noah. When Noah was drunk, he uncovered himself. And his son, who was foolish, came and saw his dad nakedness. He started to laugh. He started to talk about. Instead of covering his dad, he went to talk about outside. He found his two brothers and said, oh, you, you don't know what is happening with our dad. Come see, he's naked. You understand? But his two brothers did not do the same mistake. They took a robe and they walked backward. So they did not see, they did not face the dad. 
They entered the tent, covering the, the robe. They both took the robe and walked backward in a way that they would not see the dad. It's very clear here. Brothers and sisters, all of this is just to say, whatever your dad does, especially whatever he does wrong, he stays in the house. You are not to observe. You are not to think about it. You are not to judge your dad. You keep it with you. You are not to go talk outside and tell on your dad what your dad has done wrong. Even though what he's doing is wrong. If you choose not to listen, you should read the remaining of chapter 9 to understand what happened to him. Because the next day, eventually, uh, he, wa- he came back from his <laughs> drunkenness and he learned about what happened. He was furious, very. And he cursed the sons of, he cursed the son of Ham, one son. His name was Canaan. Ken- uh, I know you will, you will ask the question why, did, why he didn't curse Ham. Because he is the one who did all these things. You have to go back in the history, uh, probably in verse 1, where he says, um, God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. So God had already blessed Ham, blessed Shem, blessed Japheth. You understand? So Noah could not curse what God has already blessed Brothers and sisters, if God has blessed you already, there is no one who can curse you. Even your dad. So he could not curse him because of that, and he cursed his son. Ham had many other sons, definitely, but there must be a reason he cursed Ken. Probably because Kenan looked like his dad, was doing the same stupid things like his dad. Do not copy everything you see, even if they are coming from your dad. Hallelujah. Amen. So he got cursed, and, and it was terrible. From generation to generation, you, the sons of your sons will be servants, will work for other people. And he, it stayed like that. If you read the entire uh, Genesis, you will understand all the battles that Canaan, all the trouble that he caused to everyone else around. Amen? Amen. These Can- Canaanites were pagans. We're not believing in God. Amen? So now you understand that this lady, this woman, was a Canaanite woman, descendant of Canaan, with all the bizarre things and the curses. She had them in her. And she went to live in Tyre and, and Sidon, where Jezebel was from, where they were worshiping Baal. You understand? So she has a combination of all of that. Amen? Amen. So that was the history. Amen. 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 <laughs> so this lady came to Jesus because she was going through an impossible situation, a crisis something she could not find a solution to. She came to Jesus because something was not right. This woman was devastated. Amen? She was devastated. She could not have a normal life. How can you have a normal life when you have a child who is demon-possessed? And this demon was not, was a particular kind of demon. It was an immoral demon. So she was possessed. I have to say that when something is wrong in your life, you are, you are going to do everything that is possible to find a solution, especially if it's your child. A, a, a Canaanite woman, a Syrophoenician woman, will never go and talk with Jesus. You understand? It is impossible for that to happen. First of all, they do not believe in God. They cursed God. They battled God's people. They did all the weird things. 
But guess what? That is where Jesus went. The Canaanite woman did not leave Phoenicia to go in Galilee to meet Jesus. No. Jesus left where he was ministering to his people and went to find her where she was. Brothers and sisters, when your, your heart is right, Jesus will find you where you are. Amen. Jesus will find you where you are. So this mother was bothered. She was devastated. Something was wrong in her life. Her child was lost. She did not know what to do. She forgot that she was a Syrophoenician. She forgot that she was a Canaanite. She forgot all of that. She said, I am going to meet this person because I have heard. I have heard. For those who watch TV, you remember this lady in, um, near the border, I mean, in the southern part of uh, USA, uh, with this crisis with uh, the, uh, the migrants. The mother came with her child, who is, I think, eight or seven years old, and then they took the child away. They separated the mother with the child. Actually, they did to many parents. She could not live anymore. She was like sick. She explained on TV, it's like taking a knife and putting in my heart. You just killed me because you, you just took my child away from me, and I don't know where my child is. She was devastated. She became crazy. And then when you become crazy, when you don't have a solution, you do everything you can. For those who know the story, she sued the Trump's government. This is the government you're begging to have an asylum. These are the people you're begging to have something. But because what has just happened, it goes beyond what you can think. You have no solution. You sue them. All she wanted is the baby. I don't care how it looks like, but I want my baby back. I mean, I want my baby back. This mother, the baby was sick. I don't care what other people will say. I don't care even what Jesus thinks. I'm embarrassing myself right now. I do not care. I want a solution for my child. Hallelujah. 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 As I'm talking right now, you probably have a family member who is sick. You probably have a child who is on drugs. You probably have a daughter who is out of control. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. 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 Ah, I need to connect. I need this message to go through. Hallelujah. You must have a family member who is sick or is going through a difficult time. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, Canaanite or not, there is only one name that has a solution. And that name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. Jesus. Out of desperation, this lady came to Jesus and said, "Ah, Master, Master, Son of David. Since when a Canaanite will call Jesus son of David? They did not believe in David. They did not like David. I mean, this is crazy. But this is the only thing to do when something is, becomes impossible. Jesus and Jesus alone can save you. Jesus and Jesus alone is the solution to your problem. Yes. Jesus alone can com- comfort you and can wipe your tears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what happened. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Amen? Amen. For all the mothers that are here, you're suffering right now because something is wrong. The answer is Jesus, son of David, have mercy. All the fathers, you don't know what what tomorrow it will bring you. Maybe your job is in jeopardy right now, we're talking. Maybe you're losing everything, you're saving and everything. You don't know how to to pay your mortgage, your down payment. Jesus, the son of David. Jesus alone is your solution. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to our situation. This woman is a reject. She is an outcast. Canaanites are like the worst Gentiles, if I can say that. Amen? So a normal Jew 
wouldn't talk to a person like her. She was considered impure. Amen. Amen. But she had a problem. When you have a problem, impure or pure or whatever, you don't care. You're going to knock to a door where normally you wouldn't. Amen? Amen. This spirit that the child had in her was immoral, sexual immorality and stuff like that. But she made the right decision to turn from dead gods to a living God. That is the only solution that I'm presenting to you today. Any problem you have, keep in mind that you can turn to the living God to find a solution. Hallelujah. Verse 23, if I, I can have it on the screen. Verse 23 says, but he did not answer a word. Jesus did not answer a word. The woman began to cry, but Jesus remained silent. This is a rejection. I don't know how you call it. It's a rejection. Brothers and sisters, understand that everywhere Jesus went, there was a crowd around him. He had 12 disciples already. You have 12 bodyguards around you. So it is impossible to get to him. But other people were following him. Amen? Amen. So this lady, who is a reject lady, who is impure, who is whatever you can describe her, she just found a small window of opportunity to connect with Jesus. She's begging Jesus, crying, and Jesus remains silent. Amen? For a person like me, when a cup is half empty, for me it's half full. Jesus did not reject her. Jesus did not say no. So we have 50% of the problem solved because he did not say anything, which means there is a possibility he's going to say something. Do you agree with me? Hallelujah. But many people can think this is a rejection. Jesus has already rejected me. Amen? Amen. It is impossible for Jesus not to say a word. Simple, because himself is the word. Do you understand? The book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, says, In the beginning was what? And the word was? And the word is? Amen. So Jesus is the word. When he says Jesus did not say a word, It does not mean Jesus did not have a word to say. I have a solution for you, but I do not give you the solution because he is the word. Amen? Amen. So you may think it's a rejection, but I think we are half there. Amen? Amen. Verse 24. Verse 24 says, He answered, I was, because the lady was, keep crying, keep making noise, He answered, saying, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Ah! First, he did not say anything. Understand the situation is complicated. Jesus, son of David. And then people are kicking you out. I mean, you don't know what to do. And then he opened his mouth, and then he said, I was sent to the other people. For you, this is it. Am I right? He, because now he has said, second rejection. But I'm here this morning to tell you, don't give up. Amen. Do not give up. Amen. Jesus did, did not say no. He said, actually, I was sent to these people. Me, I add, but. Because I have an expectation, I am still expecting something. Brothers and sisters, after one or two prayers, most people give up. And then when you give up, you give up. But some people do not give up. We, some people do not. We heard the testimony of um, uh, Claudia last Sunday. How many times did her application for immigration was rejected? Many times. Eh? Rejected once, rejected twice. Many times it was rejected. Did she give up? No, she did not. As a result of perseverance, 
Today she has her papers. Yeah. We did, we celebrated last Sunday. Am I right? <laughs> Do not give up easily. When the, the answer to your prayer, the answer you're looking for is overdue, let's say it's due yesterday, you do not care anymore. Yes, you rejected me once. Yes, you rejected me twice. For me, it's not a complete rejection. As long as you don't kick me out, you haven't rejected me yet. So I will continue. I will continue. I don't care about what people think. I don't care about perceptions. I don't care about anything. I will keep going. I understand that disciples will be kicking the lady, get out of here and stuff, but I will continue to move people, move. I want to talk to the master, hallelujah. I want to talk to the master. I don't care how he looks like. These may be uh, obstacles, but I don't care about obstacles. I may be looking for Aslam like this lady, and I'm rejected, and you take my child, and whatever. But I will keep coming until I get my child back, and probably until I get this asylum. Am I, am I talking to someone who understands what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a problem, and I need a solution. When you have a problem, nothing else counts. What people are saying does not count. What disciples were saying did not count for this lady. She needed a solution, and she needed to find a solution. Nothing did not count anymore. She may have been from a cast out people, but that day, the cast out person was going to meet the master. Was going to meet the master. Your son is not doing well, your nephew's daughter is not doing well, your dad has cancer, but today you're going to meet the master. You will meet the master because the first no was not really a no. It was a no with small character. I need a big no for me to give up. Even if I see a big no, I will ask for a second big no. And if I see a second big no, I will ask for a third big no. If Jesus had not said no, 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 for me it's yes. Hallelujah. That is called faith. Hallelujah. Today, are you ready to meet the master? Do you have really a problem? Because when you have a problem, you do not care. I can tell you here who has a problem. I just see how you are worshiping. That's it. <laughs> a person who has a problem, you are going to think this person is crazy. They know what they're doing. Hallelujah. Everything was wrong with the Canaanite woman. She was from a wrong race. Wrong background, wrong ethnicity. She was just wrong. She was wrong. It did not look like she had hope. You tell me, do you think she had hope? She had no hope. There was no hope, hallelujah. But by faith, she met Jesus. By faith, she met Jesus. By faith, Noah built the ark. It was by faith. Uh -huh. By faith, Abraham stood up and went to a place of promise. By faith, his wife. By faith, his wife got a baby at the age where normally another woman wouldn't. She got a baby at the age of, twice the age of where normally other women may conceive. Twice. How old are you? Hmm? Twice she had a baby. We were talking last Sunday about David, the King David, when he was about to die. He was 70 years old. Am I? Sarah was how old? Almost 100 when she had a baby. Brothers and sisters, there is no limit to our God. Age is not a limitation for him. There is nothing that is impossible to our God. By faith, what you're looking for, you will receive it. You just have to believe. You just have to persevere. Hallelujah, by faith. Maybe I'm talking to people who don't have kids here, and they are looking at their age. Every time it's your birthday, you think, I'm growing older, I still don't have a baby. Sarah had a baby when she was twice the age where she could not have a baby anymore. 
our, our, our Lord is amazing and he does amazing things. Nothing is impossible to him. Amen. 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 I, I am prophesying. Whoever is attached to this vision, cross pen vision, whoever is attached to this vision will change this world. Our vision is to touch and change the world. Whoever is attached to this vision will change the world. It may not be you, but it could be your kids. Change the world. Among you, there will be doctors and professors and, and lawyers. And I'm serious when I'm saying that. Yes. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It happened to Sarah. It will happen to more people here. Yes. Hallelujah. It will happen to more people here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus did not answer a word. And then on top of that, if you continue, disciples are complaining. You know, when you want to see the master, at least be friends with the people around him. You know, the secretary, the bodyguard, the, you know, they can make a way for you to see the master. You know, they can talk to the master for you. But here, they are complaining. They are saying, this lady is driving us crazy. She is driving us crazy. Master, Say something. This means that the master was not saying something. Or whatever he had said was not enough for the lady to go. And disciples knew that. So they needed, they put pressure on Jesus to say no. Hallelujah. Your circumstance will put pressure on you to give up. When you have a medical report that looks like the last one you got, or even worse, it puts pressure on you to give up your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do not give up. We give up too easily because of circumstances, the problems they accumulate, and then you give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not give up. This lady was probably telling disciples, my praise is bugging you. Because all she was saying, she was praising the Lord. Jesus, son of, of David, she was praising Jesus, using Jesus' title. Am, am I right? So let me tell you, your praise, for you to, to have a solution, your praise has to bother someone. You will be here, you praying, you praising, you jumping. Let me tell you, the people around you that are looking at you saying, okay, who do you think he is? Yes, your praise is bothering someone. Amen. That is where there is a breakthrough. Amen. A breakthrough does not come like this. Jesus, oh, I need this. A breakthrough comes where there is difficulties. A breakthrough here came because her praise was bothering, bothering people. Hallelujah. If it happened to you, praise more. Amen. Tell the disciples, move out of my way. I want to talk to the master. I will praise even more. I was crying. Now I'm going to yell. I'm going to, I'm going to bother you even more. The master is going to hear me. Amen. Actually, the master heard me, but he hasn't responded yet. I'm not stopping. I'm going to yell. I'm going to yell. I'm going to yell. Your praise has to bother people. Your praise has to bother for the demons to go, your praise has to bother them. You have to worship the Lord to the point where the devil will give up. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Shout in the morning. Shout in the evening. Yes. Bother people. Shout. I don't care about neighbors. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I was not planning to do this, but I see you sleeping a little bit. I, coming weeks, maybe I will give some of my testimonies. Um, you all know that I was very much persecuted and, and stuff because they were killing my tribes, and then I escaped all of that. When I escaped, when I got released from prison, a prison was a place where they collected people from my tribe in order to kill them easily. 
So they bring people like here, and then they start killing them. So I escaped that place, and then I went to live uh, in, an, in an apartment um, with my, my wife, and, and then a, a bunch of uh, Christians, a bunch of friends, uh, pastors and people I did not know. God was just sending people to worship with us. So we were worshiping all night, and uh, tried to sleep in the morning, but it was difficult because I was li living in, in hiring. Uh, so we would worship. At that time, I had given my life to Jesus, but I was not into it too much because I was concerned about my shout. It will bother the neighbors. This is a building, and then we're singing crazy, you when you don't have a solution, you, you become, I mean, it was crazy. I'm not the quiet guy you used to see. I was, I was yelling me too. Amen? I need the master to hear me. So don't say anything. I'm going to shout. But deep in me, I was saying, hmm, what if the neighbors call the police? I'm back to, to that thing again. You understand? So I struggled with that. But the people who were with me did not care. I don't know what happened, but we were singing, we were praising crazy. Brothers and sisters, when you, give, when you leave your comfort zone and you start praying outside of your comfort zone, outside of your pain, outside of your suffering, and then you connect with God, you're praising him, I'm not praising you because of my suffering. It's not my suffering praising you, but it's me. Things start happening. Things start happening. Hallelujah. We live in doubt. We, we, we want, we, we're wondering when someone says something and then you connect to that. You say, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Brothers and sisters, when you have a problem, forget about all of that. Leave your comfort zone. Give yourself to God 100%. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't communicate enough with God because we look around you, you wonder what is going around you. Maybe they will call the police. Let them call the police. If the police come, then probably I will stop. But if they do not call the police, fine, I continue making my noise. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So it looks like I'm talking to someone. <laughs> I'm talking to someone here. You, you, you have something to give, but you are not giving. Your praise, if, if half praise, you clap hands like you have problems here. It, if half praise, you know, they say hallelujah, you open hallelujah. I mean, <laughs> be free. You, you know, it's like you're selling, give me more money and then I will, I will yell. It, this means you have no problem. Because the day you're going to have a problem, no one will recognize you anymore. You will be the one jumping and the one running all over the place here. Which is fine too, because at least now you're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah. We are not praising the Lord accordingly. We, you know, you look at the way you dress. I cannot jump. I cannot lay down. You, you keep everything. And unfortunately, it, it reflects in your tithing too. Hmm? It reflects in your giving as well. You just give a little bit. You do not give what you, you have been instructed to do. If you hear the, the voice of the Lord saying give 100, hmm, I will give 10. You give 10 instead of 100. That is your praise. That is your worship. You're just giving a little. What kind of mountain do you think you're going to move with that little faith you are ex exercising? Almost nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Your, your praise has to match the blessings that the Lord has been giving you every single day. Amen. When your praise and your giving does not match the, the, uh, your blessings, something is wrong. I say something is wrong. Some of us should be dead by now. 
because I remember that I should be dead by now. I do not care about what you think. I will just praise. I will just come on Wednesday. I will just come on, on Tuesday. I will just come. I will just praise the Lord. Because what I have to give is still under what I have received from the Lord. If you have breath, praise the Lord. Don't wait until people say, okay, brother, are you here or you're not here? If you're here, come in the front, let's praise the Lord. If you have breath, praise the Lord. One day, that breath will be taken away. Uh -huh. One day, the breath will be taken away. Hallelujah. This person was desperate. A person is desperate is a person who has a different behavior, is a person who becomes crazy. Let me meet the master. I don't care what you're saying. I'm here for the master. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus was now going to this area often. This is my chance. This window of opportunity, I have to take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people are desperate this morning? Hmm? You're desperate. Hallelujah. Mende seke akasa. Rende ke akaka. He is desperate as well. It is when you are desperate that you come in the front of the Lord with your problem. Why? Because Jesus, the son of David, is the solution for you. He moves a mountain where there was no solution. There was no solution. He creates a solution. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus has a final say. It may look you're desperate. It may look like you're dead. It may look like I have lost everything. But he has the solution for you. He has the final say. Let disciples kick you out. Let other people push you. But the person who has the final say is Jesus. If he hasn't said anything, you keep going. You persevere. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to shock you. I know you said you're desperate. And many people are desperate. What moves God is not your Desperation. It is not because I'm hurting that, that will move God. Do you understand? Yeah. This lady was hurting maximum. Am I right? Yeah. But God did not have a solution for her. Am I right? Yeah. When Jesus said, Jesus said, actually I'm not here for, for you. I'm here for other people. Hallelujah. So it's not her desperation that moved Jesus to listen to her. So, when you are hurting, stop walking like, you know, I'm, I'm, I have nothing. Oh my. That, Jesus does not care about that. You read carefully what happened to this lady to move from her desperation to a praise. It is when she kept praising, kept praising, that God was moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be careful. Don't walk like someone who is dead because I'm desperate. Praise like someone who is about to die. Amen. You understand? Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 24. Verse 24 says, He answered, I was sent only to the lordship of the house of Israel. Another rejection. Oh my God. So you were expecting Jesus to say something. This is what he said. This is another rejection again. This lady did not need anything else. She needed Jesus to act. Am I right? And let's keep going. She, she kept kneeling, she kept praising him, she kept saying, Lord, Lord. Okay, you have to understand one thing. Jesus is in his mission at that time. Pharisees and all the other people are rejecting him. Okay? And later, he will be crucified and he will resurrect. Okay? So at this time, he is not known yet as the Lord. But here is this lady, who is not even the person Jesus was sent to, who is calling him already Lord. 
son of David, do you see this level of faith? The people he went to rejected him and crucified him. But here is a person, because of the problem she, she had, she is praising him, calling him Lord. You understand? So he said, and keep praying, uh, uh, verse 26. And he answered, it is not right, it is not proper, becoming, it is, it is not proper or fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Okay. I, I hear some people laughing. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus just insulted someone, you are a dog. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, Jesus did not insult her. <laughs> okay, let me, let me make this clear, okay? <laughs> Amen. Jesus did not call her a dog. It's just an, an analogy. Okay. I understand the, that this is the reason I was talking about the history. This lady is a Canaanite lady, the worst of the Gentiles. On top of that, she had this Romans background, she had this Syrian background, she had all this Baal and all the demons with her. She was not a God's worshiper. She was not, right? She was probably single as well, because they're not talking about her husband. But she was also a woman. I apologize if someone is offended. At that time, a woman was a second-class person. And a Jew would not talk to a woman, and especially a foreigner. No! You, you will not even worship God. I cannot talk to you. You have to understand the history that the woman in this situation was nobody. What is the day today? 24th. 20th of June, 2018. Am I right? Yes. So today is the day women in Saudi Arabia, today, were allowed to drive. 2018. We are not talking about 2,000 years ago. Today. They can now drive. Okay? Okay? So when I'm t saying that this lady was a second class, you understand that back then she was really a second class. Because even today, we have p women, presidents, doctors, and everything you, you want. In this region, it's only today that they just allowed women to drive. Not that long time ago, they were allowed them to vote. So you understand the circumstances? You understand what was playing here? Amen? Amen? And you probably understand why she could not talk to Jesus. She was not allowed to talk to Jesus, and Jesus should not talk to her. But she, was, she recognized that Jesus was the master, and that's the reason she was talking to her. Hallelujah. Jesus, this lady needed Jesus to act. I don't care who I am. I am a dog, probably, but I don't care. I'm rejected. I was not counted in. I'm a Gentile. But today, I'm speaking to the master. That is the faith I'm teaching today. That is the faith we're talking about today. Regardless of what has happened to you before. You failed, and you failed, and you failed again. But if you want to talk to the master today, you can talk to the master today. Hallelujah. Amen. She is probably not a Jew. She is whatever she is, but she got Jesus' attention. I'm a Canaanite, but today I will get Jesus' attention. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your condition should, be, should not be an obstacle to reach out to God. Amen? I know she was going through a dilemma, a crisis, a difficult situation with her daughter. But because of her praise, not because of her desperation, because of her praise, the Messiah put her priority on his agenda. Brothers and sisters, you hurting, you lost your job, you don't have immigration papers, you don't have a husband, you don't have a child, all of that 
are part of your suffering, you are probably desperate. But the solution is not to cultivate desperation. The solution is to praise the Lord. I am praising you despite my situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not the desperation, it's not the suffering that attracted Jesus. It is the praising. Jesus was praised, was magnified, and that attracted him. Hallelujah. In this church, we need mothers and brothers who can overcome their race, who can overcome their situation, who can overcome their suffering, their desperation, and praise the Lord. Regardless of the situation, you will always be too tall, too dark, too short, too blonde, too something, not intelligent enough, not talented enough. Can, can that disadvantage make you maybe study more? Eh? Make you stay work, work up more, go to bed late, have more diplomas? Use your situation to get something. Use your situation to gain something. But all of this I'm talking about is perseverance. If you cannot persevere, if you give up, as soon as they say something, you give up, and then you go, we're going nowhere. Hallelujah. This lady certainly learned how to deal with rejection. Definitely. Hallelujah. I agree I'm a dog. I'm a Canaanite whatever, but I want to talk to the master anyways. Hallelujah. Jesus responded to her. Jesus saw her faith and he responded. Brothers and sisters, I know it's hot here, but Jesus is still responding until today. So stay awake. Jesus has a solution for you. Until today, Jesus is still responding. Jesus is still responding. She was a Canaanite, rejected, but after Jesus' response, hmm, she became a queen. <laughs> hey? There is probably a queen here. You just do not know. She did not know who she was. She did not know who she would become. Today, 2,000 years after, we're still talking about her. Who knew her before? When you meet Jesus, your life changes, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me give you a simple example. There is a man who was born in a small village in Africa called Nyamachali some 50 years ago. There was no dad to be seen. Mom left the child with the grandmother who was very poor. The grandma had nothing. There was no hope for this child. No hope to study, no hope to become someone, no hope even to grow up like a normal child. There was no hope. This was a no good situation. This situation, no good. But when God steps in your problem, when God handles your problem, what was hopeless becomes hopeful. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, this boy survived everything. He survived rejection. He, he survived hunger. He survived abuse from a, 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 the mom's dad. He survived everything. Today, this child is called apostle. He's called pastor. He's called doctor. He's called dad. He's called husband. He's called honey tomato. Today, this child is Apostle Elijah. Amen. The rejected one became the cornerstone. The rejected one is today an ambassador. Brothers and sisters, your situation, your desperation, whatever you're going through, who cares? I mean, I care. But it's not that that moves God. Because, God, your life is a book. God knows the end of you. Eh? You are on page 10, and you are about to give up? We have 500 more pages to go through. 
Keep reading. On page five, your dad left the, 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 doesn't even know that your mother was pregnant. Your dad disappears. Page seven, the mom cannot handle you because of poverty, leaves you to the grandmother. Grandmother does not work. Grandmother has no inheritance. Grandmother does not have enough for herself. Page 10. You are sick. It becomes worse. Then there is this guy who is abusing you. You could, some people will take their life. On page 15, you can just take your life. But if you persevere a little bit, if you use some of your faith, on page 250, you meet your dad at age 22 here in Canada. On page 501, you become the apostle of um, um, Cross Point Fellowship. On page 502, you become a UN ambassador. Brothers and sisters, read your book to the end. Your book does not have 10 pages or 15 pages. Your book has more pages. Your book has more pages. So read to the end. Hallelujah. She is driving us crazy. She is not listening to us. She is persistent. She want to talk to you. You cannot meet God until you become crazy. Anyways, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The most important here, I'm going to just skip to the end. She said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. What mercy means? Mercy means undeserved favor. I receive something I do not deserve. I am a Canaanite. I'm probably a dog. I'm a woman. I'm everything you want. Okay? I'm asking for mercy. I do not know if I deserve it or not. But I'm asking for mercy. Brothers and sisters, when you have been praying and praying and do not see anything coming, you thought you deserved, but because nothing is coming, you're in doubt. Do not quit praying. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. This is a time your prayer will change to mercy. Jesus, have mercy on me. I may not deserve, I'm not a Jew. This is probably reserved to Jew people, but please have mercy. Hallelujah. Undeserved favor. Hallelujah. She kept asking. Now, you may wondering why Jesus did not respond right away, but because Jesus had the power to respond. Jesus was with his disciples. In the mind of the disciples, she was a dog. She is a Canaanite. You are a second class person. Get out of here. You understand? So Jesus was saying what these people were thinking, right? And then by acting now, Jesus was showing that regardless of who you are, regardless of what you went through, you are a son and daughter of the Most High God. There is no kings and then servants. We are all the same. You are told short, black or red, whatever your color is. We are all the same in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. This was a lesson for, for the, the disciples. And this was a testimony for her. Jesus wanted her faith to be displayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus wanted her faith to be displayed. And Jesus wants to understand that. I am giving you a little more, a little, like Apostle always say, a little more for you and a little more for others. I came for the Jew. It's a little for them. But actually, I came for the Gentiles as well. It's a little more for others. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to say that a delay is not a refusal. Amen. Jesus delayed his answer. Jesus did not give the, his answer right away. He delayed the answer. This does not mean I refuse. You may have been praying for something that you don't see. It's just a delay, my brother. It is a delay to test your faith. It is not a refusal. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a delay has a purpose. Hallelujah. 
a delay has a purpose. Let me jump to verse 28. Her response to what Jesus had to say was, Yes, Lord. I'm cast out, but I'm not offended by all the analogy with the dog. I'm not offended by that. Verse 29, Jesus recognizes her faith because she called him Lord, even one he was, when he was not yet raised from the dead. Hallelujah. So the Canaanite woman overcome the gentleness, overcome the Canaanites, whatever you can call it. She overcame her situation. She overcame the person she was to be able to minister to the master. She overcame the rejection. She overcame everything. Hallelujah. Today here I'm speaking to immigrants. You were cast out from your country. Some of you flee like me. If you didn't, and then you did, like all, all your, your parents and stuff. Some of you are very wounded, are suffering. I'm here this morning to tell you, regardless of your, your, your suffering, if you do not connect with the master, you are praying in vain. You're wasting your time. It is not because you escaped genocide that God will open all the doors for you. No. Connect with the master, worship the master, praise him, and your tomorrow will be better because you do that. You have lost your dad. Most people lost their dad. Maybe this was a disease and that place was killed. Do you understand that desperation will now move the master? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm also talking to people who were born here. You were born here, maybe from generations to generation, you were still here. And then sometimes you let yourself go because there was an, a little abuse here and a small thing here. I say small because I compare to mine. Actually, suffering is suffering. Amen? If I cut one finger out, if they cut one of your finger and me, they took the whole thing out, the suffering is the same. We all suffer the same. The pain is the same, regardless of what you went through. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. But the story with the Canaanite woman should tell us that regardless of the pain and the suffering of what we went through, it could be genocide or it could be abuse of my teacher in grade five, it is also the same. If we want to break through, we have to cut ties with all the history that are bad behind us in order to move forward. Amen. Don't dwell on your past. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, you endured something, but move on now. Turn the page now. You're still on page 10. Okay? Turn the page, go on page 11, and you'll see a new world. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who are here coming from all over the place, you are lost, you don't know what to do. As long as you, 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 you praise the master, master will cause people you do not know to know you. Master will cause people who do not now know how to pronounce your name to love you, to open their arms, to welcome you, to embrace you. Would you embrace them back? Would you love them back? Would you give back? Hmm? Sunday coming... That's the Canada Day, very important day. This is the day to show your colors. This is the day to show you proud of being Canadian. This is the day to give back, hallelujah. People open the doors, open and give you. Give back, hallelujah. Give back. Give back. There is a lady here, I think she's not here, she's pregnant. Uh, her name is Falon. Falon was a, a single, she's here. Oh, hallelujah. Falon is here. Oh, she's even in the back over there. Hallelujah. I did not know what Falon does. She was single, now she's married, praise the Lord, and she's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> she will take her salary, which was not much to afford her mortgage and stuff like that, 
And every week, she will go to Superstore or all these kind of Sobeys and stuff to buy um, stuff. Okay? And then she will keep them in her house. For who? For homeless people. I'm revealing something you guys did not know. I did not know either. When she has enough, she will go to um, the center downtown here. Her dropping center with her car. She will open for, for the homeless or the people in the dropping center to come get food. Her own money, her own time. This is giving back to the society. This is forgetting who you are and understanding the reason God gave you chance to breathe again and to be someone. This is giving back. <laughs> Hallelujah. And before we know, many other people, Pasi, my wife, and so many other people, started going with her, uh, bringing more things on Sunday, on Saturday. I don't know she, when she goes there. This is an invitation. If you want to give, connect with her because she has that spirit already. Hallelujah. So my point is turn your back to your past. Leave your past behind. Your past will not block you to connect with the master. Your past will not uh, be an obstacle for you to connect with the master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would like to finish by talking quickly to children. We understand and we know what happened to uh, Noah's grandson, Canaan. All of this is because they did not respect Noah. The entire generation was cursed because they did not respect their dad. Last week was Father's Day, and we preached on that. And today, the message, I did not choose it, but it just happened. Hallelujah. Respect your father. Do not despise your father. Doesn't matter what they're doing. This is not only for small children. Some of you, you have your fathers still. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's time to give them a call and say sorry. Hey? Maybe you have done something wrong. This is the time to give them a call and say sorry. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may stand in the presence of the Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you for this message on faith and perseverance, Lord. We are here in your presence, Lord. And as our mission says, we will change the world. We will transform the world. Not because of might or power, but because of your spirit, Lord. Some of the people who are here and who agreed with my message, Lord, I prophesy that they will eat the fruit of their work. They will change and transform this world because it's not by power, it is by your spirit. We pray, hallelujah, for those who were wounded, abused in the past, to leave the past behind them and move forward, to forgive and forget, forgive and move forward, hallelujah. It's you and you alone, hallelujah, who can heal them, who can bring comfort, hallelujah. I'm asking that you touch them. Touch them, hallelujah. They have been wounded. Some of them are dwelling on that past, hallelujah. Heal them completely so they can be world changers tomorrow, hallelujah. The church count on them. The community count on them. This country count on them, hallelujah. Turn your back to your past. Read more pages of your book. Your life is not over yet. Oh, hallelujah. Reveal that to your brothers and sisters. Reveal that to your, to your sons and your relatives that their life is not over yet. Uh, the situation they are in, this is not over yet. God Almighty is in charge. God Almighty is in control. Hallelujah. If you are here this morning and you know you haven't given your life to Jesus, you haven't invited Jesus in your life as a Messiah, as Lord, Son of David. 
I'm asking you to lift up your hand so we pray with you to invite Jesus in your life. If it happened to this lady, the Canaanite lady, the, the less than every, everyone, if it happened to her, it can happen to you. Blessings can come to you, but you have to know to invite Jesus in your life. If you're here and say, I would like Jesus to come in my life, just show me your hand. If you're here and you're still desperate, still desperate, show your hand as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother, come here. Come, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.